Hey there, chemists. In this lesson, we're going to look at how we can do substitution reactions on aromatic rings. Uh, molecules like benzene don't do the same kinds of reactions that what we've seen before with alkenes. Remember, those pi bonds in a benzene ring are delocalized through resonance. So we don't see the typical addition reaction that you would get with an alkene. Instead, we see things that are substitutions. And today we'll look at how chemists change aromatic rings uh, into substituted aromatic rings. And this is very useful in the, the drug development industry and all sorts of applications employ this chemistry. Um, they're all electrophilic. The ones we're going to learn today are all electrophilic substitutions. And we'll start off with just how do you attach a halogen to the ring, something like a bromine to the ring. Uh, to do that, you use elemental bromine which is already electrophilic enough when it sees a typical alkene, as we saw last semester, but not true when a benzene ring attacks this. So a Lewis acid such as ferric bromide or iron three bromide is used to do that conversion. And the mechanism starts off with just the combination of these reagents. So I'm gonna draw out a bromine molecule, just showing the sigma bond. And when this sees uh, the iron ion in iron three bromide, the iron acts as a Lewis acid and it actually removes one of the bromides. So you essentially get a bromide cation left behind and then a complex ion with a iron and four bromines uh, as sort of a byproduct. So it's this species that's the, the active electrophile in this reaction. So when something like benzene sees this, now a virtually naked bromine cation is electrophilic enough to get attacked by the aromatic ring and break the aromatic pi system. And you do what looks like the beginning of a addition reaction with a bromine on one carbon and we'll put a positive charge on the other. But as soon as the molecule does this, it sort of has a buyer's remorse. It really wants to go back to becoming aromatic. So to do that, uh, we reform the aromatic ring and put that pi bond right back where it was and if you look at what changed from this intermediate, it means we had to lose a hydrogen. The hydrogen that we lost is the one directly attached to the carbon with the bromine on it. And virtually anything in your reaction media can be considered basic enough to take away that hydrogen and do what looks like an E1 style mechanism to reform that pi bond. So we reform the aromatic ring. And even though this is just an example with benzene, you can imagine something very similar to this happening with virtually any of the other aromatic compounds uh, that we've seen. Um, other than bromination, we could attach other halogens. Uh, it's almost the same set of reagents for chlorination. It would be elemental chlorine and then a chlorine containing Lewis acid, something like aluminum chloride is what we commonly see. Uh, the mechanism is virtually the same. A chlorine molecule sees aluminum chloride, strips off one of the chlorides. You get a chloride, a chlorine cation, and then the aluminate anion, and then benzene will see the chlorine as a cation. That's an electrophilic enough to break the pi system, form the beginning of an addition product, but it doesn't undergo addition. Instead, you will get a substitution and reform that pi bond in the same style as we saw with bromination. Uh, there's a couple of other reasons out there that are slightly different to add things like iodine and fluorine. Uh, we'll get to those a little bit later. For now, bromine and chlorine are going to be sufficient for us if we want to, let's say, turn them into Grignard reagents or something like that. Okay, so we're just going to look at a few others, and what we'll notice is that the same kind of pattern follows for all of these. The reagents will mix, 
you'll form some kind of active electrophile. Benzene attacks that electrophile and you reform the aromatic ring. This is the generic mechanism of what we call an electrophilic aromatic substitution. They're all going to have this feature today. Uh, a common thing that chemists do to delocalize electrons and, and make the ring very electron poor is a nitration reaction to add a very electron withdrawing nitro group. That's done with two very strong acids, nitric acid and then sulfuric acid are the common reagents for this. And the first thing that happens is those two things mix. So if I draw out nitric acid, it looks like this. with a formal charge on the nitrogen and a formal charge on the oxygen. And in the presence of sulfuric acid, I'm just gonna abbreviate sulfuric acid as an H plus. Sulfuric acid is so strong that it actually protonates nitric acid. So you get the conjugate acid of nitric acid in this. Filled with formal charges. And then you expel a water molecule. And that's easily done by bringing that pair of electrons from that oxygen. So you lose a water. And then you get an NO2 cation. And this is our active species in this. This is called a nitronium ion. And that's what gets attacked by benzene. So just like in the previous example, a benzene will attack our active electrophile. So when benzene sees this, this electrophilic species, and I'm just going to write it as NO2 with a plus charge on the N, that'll break the pi system. Now you'll form a new carbon-nitrogen bond plus charge on the other carbon on the ring. And as before, I'll just write the generic word base. That base will take away the H and reform the pi bond in the ring and you reform your aromatic ring. So even though the reagents are different, the theme of the mechanism is exactly the same. The active species com uh, is formed by combining the reagents, and then the aromatic ring attacks your, your electrophile. And we'll see that in the next one as well. Uh, this is a sulfonyl group, another electron withdrawing group uh, that we'll see is very useful for syntheses because you can put it on the ring and you can also rather easily take it off the ring. So it can act as a blocking group. And we'll see that when we do some syntheses. Uh, the reagents for this are sulfur trioxide, SO3, uh, one of the most dangerous substances because when you mix it with water, it forms sulfuric acid, which is also a reagent in this reaction. So I want you to try uh, hitting pause for a second and see if you can figure out the mechanism for how sulfur trioxide first reacts with a strong acid to form some active species, and you should be able to figure out what it is based on what gets attached to the ring. And then how does benzene react with that active species to form the substitution product? So hit pause and just try that now in a minute, and then come back and watch. Okay, so sulfur trioxide uh, just protonates. One of the oxygens can pick up an H, and you'll get protonated sulfur trioxide, and that's actually the active electrophile. That's it. That's what benzene sees. And if you think about what this sulfonyl group looks like, it's a carbon sulfur bond that's formed. So even though there's a positive charge on the oxygen, uh, the benzene does not attack the oxygen. That would violate the octet. But instead, it actually attacks the sulfur, and that sends that sulfur oxygen pi bond up to the oxygen. So you get a new carbon sulfur bond. Those other oxygens still there along for the ride. And as a result, a plus charge on the other carbon, 
we have the same kind of thing we saw before up here, and then even previously up here with the bromine. The new group is attached, we have a plus charge, and we want to reform our aromatic ring. So something will act as a base, and it always takes away the hydrogen directly attached to the same carbon where the new group goes. That's the hydrogen that gets lost. And we reform our aromatic ring. And I'm just going to abbreviate this group as an SO3H, what's called a sulfonyl attached to the ring. So those are all quite electron withdrawing. We've got a halogen, a nitro, and a sulfonyl. Um, and they're useful for changing the electronics of the ring. But if we want to homologate this ring and make it bigger, we need to add carbon groups. And that's how we're going to wrap up today. So how do we add carbon groups to this ring? Uh, the main way to do this is what's called the Friedel-Crafts reaction. And the Friedel-Crafts reaction uses carbon electrophiles. So if I wanted to add just an ethyl group to the ring, I would need an ethyl electrophile. So a chloroethane, an alkyl halide such as chloroethane will do this. It's not electrophilic enough. I need a Lewis acid. So like we used up above, I'll use a Lewis acid like aluminum chloride. And similarly to what we've seen so far, the first thing is the reagents combine and you'll get almost a naked carbocation along with the complex ion that forms from the Lewis acid. And that's just from the chloride being stripped off by the aluminum in this case. Now I have this active electrophile, and that's what benzene sees. So benzene attacks, in this case, uh, the ethyl cation. I have two new carbons attached to the benzene ring, carbocation, and I take away that last H on the same carbon as where the new group goes to reform my aromatic ring. With a new alkyl group. Now notice when we do this, we make a carbocation and the one I have here is not a good carbocation. That's a primary carbocation, which is terrible. That's also why it's so hard to form and get attacked by benzene. But luckily, this is the only cation that I could make from chloroethane. You could imagine doing this with some other molecule where a carbocation rearrangement can occur, and indeed that happens. So I'm going to say rearrangements occur. So everything we learned about carbocation rearrangements is still fair game when we do this reaction. So the Friedel-Crafts alkylation, which is what this is, is not necessarily the best one to use if there's the possibility of a carbocation rearrangement. It's fine if you've got no other cation that's possible, or if you're using a halide that forms a very good cation, like a tertiary cation or an allylic cation. But there's an alternative called the acylation reaction, and it also attaches carbon groups uh, via what's called an acyl. That's like this half of a ketone containing species. And the electrophile is not an alkyl halide, uh, but an acid chloride. We don't know how to make acid chlorides yet, but you can buy simple acid chlorides. And in the presence of a Lewis acid, you could do a reaction such as that, where I have an acid chloride and a Lewis acid, and I attach a new carbon group uh, that looks like everything without the halogen, the, the chloride in this case. And the way it happens is similarly, the reagents combine first. So in this case, I have a three carbon acid chloride that reacts with aluminum chloride. The aluminum acts as a Lewis acid and it strips off the chloride, leaving me with what looks like a very bad cation right on this carbon of the carbonyl uh, in addition to the complex ion with aluminum. Uh, but this actually is resonance stabilized. 
by using those electrons on the oxygen. You could throw the formal charge on the oxygen instead. So this actually isn't as bad of a cation as it looks because of that resonance contributor right there. Regardless, that's the cation that gets attacked. And this has no rearrangements because you're, you're stuck you know, in these two contributors of this one resonance hybrid. So this will see cation. I'll draw it the way I have it in the first contributor. There's a way to do it for the other one, but it's the same. The aromatic ring attacks the cation. You form a new carbon-carbon bond. And then something acts as a base to take away that last H. You break the CH bond, reform the pi bond, and now you have your new substituted product. This one will make a ketone attached to the ring, whereas before we just had an alkyl group. Uh, but there's ways to turn one into the other. We'll soon learn how to reduce this down to just an alkane. And from last semester, you could do a radical halogenation at the benzylic position there and actually functionalize that alkyl group. And the main takeaway from this, however, is that in acylation, no rearrangements occur. So that's much more useful if you want to make something with a long linear carbon chain attached to the ring. I'll also just add another note about Friedel crafts in general. Um, Friedel crafts, I'll just say FC, Friedel crafts reactions do not work well if there are electron withdrawing groups or EWGs on the ring. Or OH and NH2 groups. So in synthesis, it is best to Friedel crafts first. So we'll see that when we do Friedel crafts reactions, uh, do the Friedel crafts reaction first, uh, because we've so far only learned how to turn a molecule into a substituted molecule by putting an electron withdrawing group on it, a nitro, a sulfonyl, even a halogen. Uh, they just work that much more poorly. The reason for that is you really need a nucleophilic aromatic ring to do any of these reactions. And once you put something like a sulfonyl or a nitro on the ring, you're, you're making that ring a lot less nucleophilic. Uh, at the bottom of your page is one other reaction that also makes carbon-carbon uh, bonds on benzene rings. It actually makes an aldehyde, so it's a little bit different than the Friedel-Crafts reaction. Um, it's called the vilsmeer hock reaction, and we will get to this mechanism later, so we're not going to do the mechanism now. But there's the reagents. It's actually something you've seen before, uh, POCl3 with uh, dimethylformamid, almost always abbreviated as DMF. So those are uh, four different types of electrophilic aromatic substitutions, halogenation, nitration, sulfonation, and alkylation slash acylation, how to get carbon-carbon bonds.